What what would you say is the most important thing to to focus on for someone who's interested in developing their understanding of the Buddha's teachings? We've talked about um, daily life being a place where we can put, put it all into practice, but um, you know, out of meditation and listening to teachings and reflecting, um, where should we really? focus to start with? Well, I mean, actually in a way you've just indicated that, that how we make a, make a, uh, develop our encounter with Dharma, how we learn the Dharma, so to speak, learn its, its skills through, through hearing and then reflecting and meditating. Um, and then, as to where we should place our attention to see whether the Dharma is working in us, I think for almost all of us, the, the thing will be, how am I relating to this person now? And there's the, the real key to whether the Dharma is there, the value of the Dharma is there with us in that moment, is how am I relating to this person who, who, I'm, who I'm with, or who is asking me a question, or who wants something with me. Or is just walking across the road with me, or is just coming to me from across the road. It's always in that 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 circumstance of life that we can see. Now, of course, when we see that, we'll see that sometimes we're attentive to them, and sometimes we're forgetful. Sometimes we're no, we're annoyed by them. Sometimes we find that we can be kind to them. It, it will da- change from day to day, from encounter to encounter, but. In a way, that is the mark of, of how much the Dharma is working in us. Because they say, that, as I was saying, the Dharma really works by softening this, the, 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 the heart. Basically, our heart is really tense and tight and, and, and rigid and has been <coughs> out of our fearfulness and all the rest of it that we've been carrying with us for so long. And so that is where it, it, we will start to see the 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 change the the real important changes. I say that because sometimes people think that the really I'm I, you know I'm progressing the Dharma if I if you know I can sit cross-legged for half an hour. It's important to do that. It's good, but you could do that and still be not changed. Um, or you you could have understood some important doctrine of the Dharma, but you could still not be changed and you not be practicing. So you know as you're not moving the dumb is not working anymore. so if you like if you like for the measurement of dharma whether your dharma is working or not look every day to your heart and and how you are in, in the encounter with 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 others um, because it's the good heart as the teacher calls it which is the the the, the real evidence of of dharma but then how are we to, what should we focus on in terms of engaging with the Dharma? I think we should, the, the, the Dharma is, is uh, studying the Dharma, practicing the Dharma, uh, in a way is, is it needs um, a double dimension. One is the acquiring the teachings and the other is, is, is doing the, the, the meditation practice. Now, of course, in, in, in many Buddhist countries, many Buddhists don't do this. Um, they, 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 are they not Buddhists? Yes, they are, because they're still trying to cultivate good-heartedness, and they're observing the, the, Dharma, the precepts, the moral teachings of the Dharma, which create the necessary space for that. And that's a very important, a very important thing to, to remind ourselves of, that, that the moral precepts of the Dharma form the... the one of the three trainings that the Buddha said we all need ethics, meditation and wisdom but we'll learn about those through, through hearing the explanations, hearing teachings so what I want to say is that what you, you should be doing if, you're going to, if Dhamma is going to work for you 
you need to develop uh, the habit of teachings that you've heard. But you 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 make your own. You you digest them, and that is done by this critical process of, of reflecting on the teachings, as we have in that saying, hear, think and meditate. The thinking process is where, having heard some teaching, or read a book, you, you take it to pieces, you examine it critically with your, your common sense, your reasoning, you see how it works, you test, is it actually, is this really saying something that is true in terms of the way the world works or how suffering arises and so on. So you, you have to, you really have to, um, there's, no, there's no shortcut, there's, there's no way to avoid this. You have to make the Dharma yours uh, by, by this process of reflection. So this is not an all at once thing, like you do it and then you, you've, you've signed off on the whole of Dharma. We do it continuously. So your approach to teaching should be, oh, it's not just I was there and somebody said something vaguely <coughs> inspiring, or all I'll read this book for a bit of temporary inspiration, but it's more like this is a manual and I need to master it. And to master it, I need to take it to pieces to see what it really means and how it really works. So your, your study program, in a way, should be, you should have a study program. It may be no more than 10 or 15 minutes a day, maybe half an hour, an hour, if you've got lots and lots of time. But try to get a habit of, of, of short study over teachings you've heard. So you may do no more than read a paragraph. Read the paragraph, close the book, and then, as it were, teach it back to yourself, asking yourself, what does it mean? How do I know this is true? And finally, summarize the points for yourself. So in that way, you, the Dharma is transferred from the teachers to you. It becomes your Dharma because you've, you've digested it in this proper way. So that's one track. And the other track is the meditation practice, the principal means of traveling. The teachings are the map book, of course. The, the, the meditation is the, the way of traveling, the way of, the way of moving. So once again, you need a regular discipline, a regular routine. This heart that needs softening, as I've described, it needs softening on a daily basis until it, the knots are completely relaxed, really liberated from, from them. And so that means if you just meditate from time to time, and so to speak, the inspiration strikes you, it doesn't really happen. You have an extraordinary experience every now and then, but the knots remain in place. Whereas daily practice, even if it's relatively short, as it should be for beginners, by the way, even if it's relatively short, the work is there. And what's more, the effect of the meditation then can be felt in everyday life. It comes out from your meditation into your everyday life. So for a beginner, I don't want to be too prescriptive about the amount of time, but to really get a good strong start, make a study and meditation program for yourself, which can run on throughout the days. If one of those should go, you, you can only do one rather than two, meditation is one to keep, of course. But, 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 but best would be to be able to do a little bit of meditation, a little bit of, of, of study uh, every day. Then the Dharma will arise in you rather than being something you simply are inspired by every time you see a book or, or meet a Buddhist person or go to a Buddhist center. The, Buddhi, the real Buddhist center is in you, in your, should be in you, in your life, in your, in, your, in your heart. We need the external center, of course, for ourselves and to make a door for Dharma for others. But the real site of the Dharma, the real place of Dharma happens, is in our own individual life. And that's why we need to be, as it were, connecting with the essence of the Dharma every day. And that we do most strongly by sitting on a cushion and by a little bit of study 
of the Buddha's teachings.